Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our third and final installment for the Science of Sleep Facebook Q&A. My name is Dr. Marishka Brown, and I am the director of the National Center on Sleep Disorders Research at the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. The Science of Sleep series is a three-part series designed to explore NIH research on the impact of sleep on our health at every age. It is co-hosted by the National right. Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute on Tri Child Health and Human Development, and the National Institute on Aging. It is my great pleasure to be joined today by Dr. Basil Eldada, who will be answering questions about sleep health for older adults. Dr. Eldada has been the, on, at the National Institute on Health since, tw since 2006 and is a medical officer and the chief of the geriatrics, the geriatrics branch in the Division of Geriatrics and Clinical Gerontology at the National Institute on Aging. He oversees a portfolio of translational and clinical research in older adults across a variety of areas and mechanisms, including palliative care and symptom management, and he helps oversee the Claude D. Pepper Older Americans Independent Centers. Dr. Eldada? Thank you, Dr. Brown. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, and I'm looking forward to sharing some insights from the research about how sleep changes when we age, and it's linked to certain diseases, um, in particular Alzheimer's disease and related dimensions. Um, I think it's safe to say we can all relate to sleeping and the lack of it. Absolutely, we can. So before we get started, I want to let everyone know that we will be sharing resources and links on Facebook throughout today's discussion. So please go to facebook.com slash NIH aging or use hashtag science of sleep on Twitter to find that information. You can also find links to our prior sessions focused on teens and middle aged adults in the comments. I also want to be clear that the information given or discussed today is not medical advice. We are sharing insights from the latest research as well as resources on this topic. If you need medical advice, please speak to your medical provider. That is a, Q a quick Q&A. <laughs> let's get to it. Okay, Dr. Eldada, let's do some myth busting. A lot of people think that older adults don't need as much sleep as younger adults or children. Is this true? And what do we know about sleep patterns in older age? Yeah, that's that's right. So there is this uh, perception out there that older adults need less sleep than younger adults. But actually, it turns out that older adults need about the same, about seven to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep each night. Um, so you know that's the same as um, most adults need. Um, but it is true that sleep habits do change um, with aging as well as sleep patterns. So as far as sleep habits are concerned, we're finding that um, uh, older adults tend to go to bed earlier and wake up earlier, and they're more likely to nap during the day. When it comes to sleep patterns, we're also finding that older people uh, tend to have more difficulty falling asleep. And when they do fall asleep, uh, they may have uh, more episodes of waking up during the night. Um, and those periods of waking up during the night tend to uh, last longer in older age. So the big question is, what causes all of these changes when we age? And we're still learning about all the different reasons, and there are probably a, a lot of different factors. Um, aging is uh, probably one of those factors, aging itself, just those underlying physiologic changes that tend to accompany advancing age. Um, and we still have much to understand in that area. Um, but also um, older adults tend to have you know, medical conditions and take medications that can affect sleep. So for example, um, older people may have discomfort or pain from an illness um, or a shortness of breath um, that could make it harder to fall asleep and stay asleep. Um, also, there are some medical conditions or medications that may cause people to have to wake up in the middle of the night and use the bathroom. Um, so all of these factors and probably many others kind of contribute to this overall picture of uh, a different picture of sleep that we tend to see in older adults. 
So thank you for that great information. That is one of the questions that we get quite often about sleep changing in older adults. So busting that myth. <laughs> So in the Science of Sleep series, we have talked about how sleep affects the health of teens and middle-aged adults. What is the difference when it comes to sleep and the health of older adults? So um, the health consequences of poor sleep that we see in younger adults actually tend to be uh, quite similar to what we see in older adults. So for example, poor sleep can increase um, someone's risk of a variety of health problems like high blood pressure heart disease, diabetes, obesity, depression, uh, and uh, Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Um, it can impair memory and decision-making. Uh, poor sleep can worsen anxiety and stress. And all of these things can contribute to uh, an increase in the risk of falls and accidents. I should say on the flip side, um, we also know that getting enough quality sleep is associated with a lower risk for some of these conditions. So you mentioned Alzheimer's disease. So one of the areas of research that NIA focuses on is the link between sleep and dementia. So can you tell us a bit more about the connection between sleep and Alzheimer's disease and Alzheimer's related dementias? Sure. So there is research that suggests that sleep in earlier adulthood may in fact play a role in the risk of dementia in later adulthood. And we're still learning how this works. We're still trying to understand you know, which way this, this relationship goes, um, meaning uh, are the changes in sleep um, early signs of dementia or are these changes in sleep in fact risk factors for developing dementia later in life? But there is one recent study that was funded in part by the NIA that gives us a clue to this question. So this was a study that assessed sleep-related measures among participants age 50 and older over a 30-year period. Um, and what they found was that people in their 50s and 60s who got six hours of, of sleep or less per night were at greater risk of developing dementia later in life compared to people who got normal amounts of sleep, which the researchers defined as seven hours or more. So, so the people getting less rest each night were actually 30% more likely to be diagnosed with dementia. And wow. So these, these, yeah, these findings suggest that, that shorter sleep duration during midlife may in fact actually increase the risk of developing dementia in older age. Um, so, so this was an interesting study. We're continuing to learn more. Um, I should add that we can't say for sure whether making certain lifestyle changes like getting more sleep um, will actually protect against dementia. We, we don't have all the data there to, to make that cause-effect relationship with certainty. Um, but we do know that making a variety of uh, positive lifestyle changes uh, does have uh, many desirable health effects, and all of these are part of you know, making healthy choices as we age. Um, I, another point I'd like to make um, is that we also tend to see changes in sleep among people who already have dementia. So um, Alzheimer's disease and related dementias in themselves can actually be the cause of a variety of uh, changes in sleep. Um, sleeping too much, sleeping too little, um, waking up often, wandering or being agitated at night, um, and poor sleep quality can make the symptoms of dementia worse. So it's, it's really important to take steps to help improve sleep and nighttime safety for people who have dementia. Uh, and of course, um, it's also important to, to note that these changes affect not only the sleep of people who have dementia, but also the caregivers of those people. Absolutely. Again, thank you for sharing that extremely informative information. We are certainly giving the audience a lot of good info today about sleep and how it affects our overall brain health and our cognition and our ability to, to clearly think and, and learn and to remember. And in fact, I was reading about a, a recent study that found that during certain stages of sleep, particularly deep sleep, the, the, the sleep uh, that there was a wave-like flow of fluid around your brain that helps remove waste products that build up during the day. And so this was a major step 
toward understanding how sleep or the lack of sleep can impact brain function, especially during aging process. So if you're an older adult, what are some of the signs that you're not getting enough sleep? So uh, several things. Um, if you wake up tired um, after a, a night's sleep, so having non-refreshing sleep, uh, if you have trouble falling asleep, if you have trouble staying asleep, um, these are all signs that you may not be getting a good night's sleep. If you're falling asleep inappropriately, like while driving, that is definitely a sign that you're not getting a good night's sleep. Um, so one thing that people can do if they're having trouble sleeping is to keep a sleep diary for a couple of weeks. So that's you know where you would keep track of um, things like the time that you go to bed, um, uh, if you wake up at night and, and how often, um, uh, and then what time you wake up during the day. And then note like all the things that might keep you awake, things that you've ingested like um, you know coffee or tea or caffeinated uh, drinks uh, or chocolate. Um, track also any alcohol use. Uh, also track any exercise or the lack of it um, for the day. Um, and keeping this kind of sleep diary can help identify patterns um, that someone can discuss with their doctor and possibly uh, help with making a diagnosis of a, a sleep disorder. Um, it's also uh, important to talk to one's doctor if tiredness or sleepiness is interfering with the ability to function during the day. So you just mentioned disorders. So what are some of the common sleep problems uh, amongst older adults? So there are three general uh, categories of sleep problems that are particularly common in older adults. Um, insomnia, sleep apnea, and movement disorders. So I'll describe each of these briefly. So insomnia is trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. And this is the most common problem in older adults. Um, and then there's a specific term for when insomnia has gone on for a long time. Um, so if someone has had trouble falling asleep or staying asleep for at least three nights a week, for at least three months, then we call that chronic insomnia. Then there is sleep apnea. Um, sleep apnea is when you have uh, these multiple temporary pauses in breathing during sleep. Um, so you, you've probably heard that you know snoring may be associated with sleep apnea, and and that may be the case. Uh, but um, snoring can uh, not everybody who snores actually has sleep apnea. Um, but there are treatments for sleep apnea. So uh, you may have heard of something called CPAP or continuous air or positive airway pressure. This is a device that people can wear at night and can help uh, deal with the symptoms of sleep apnea. And then there's movement disorders, of which there are a few. Um, these are uh, things like restless leg syndrome, where there is kind of a tingling feeling in one or both legs that may get worse at night. There's periodic limb movement disorder, uh, where people have this repetitive jerking or twitching in the legs or feet during sleep. And then there's REM sleep behavior disorder, which is when people move or act out their dreams while sleeping. Um, so if somebody has uh, any of these conditions, then they should definitely talk with their doctor. Wow. So with all of that, what are some suggestions that you have for getting a better night's sleep? So there are a number of things that someone can do. Um, so you can establish a consistent sleep pattern, meaning go to bed at the same night, at the same time every night and wake up at the same time every day. Um, create a relaxing bedtime routine. So like reading a book or taking a bath. Um, exercise regularly, that's uh, particularly important, uh, but just uh, don't do it too uh, soon before bedtime. You know, uh, exercise at least three hours or more before bedtime. Uh, and then also just set the, the thermostat for, for the bedroom to be at a com comfortable temperature. Um, there are also things that people shouldn't do. So don't eat a large meal or take caffeine or nap late in the day. That can interfere with, with sleep at night. 
Um, avoid distractions in the bedroom like TVs or phones or computers. Let the bedroom be for sleeping and do those things outside the bedroom. And certainly avoid alcohol, uh, even in, in small amounts. It's not helpful for getting a good night's sleep. Um, so uh, I should just you know, point out that it's really important to get a good night's sleep. It's probably the, one, of the most, uh, one of the best medicines that we have. So if people are trying to get a good night's sleep and they're still having trouble, um, definitely talk with a doctor. With that, Dr. Haddada, we, Eldada, we are really in agreement. So I'm interested, and I'm sure the audience would be interested, in what research the National Institute on Aging is doing in the area of sleep and aging. So we're funding several studies uh, related to sleep um, and older adults. Um, so for example, we're um, supporting research to understand better the link between cognitive decline, dementia, and sleep, like the study that I mentioned earlier. Um, studies on how to improve uh, sleep in older adults uh, with a variety of uh, conditions, including people with dementia. Um, how to better treat or manage sleep disorders like insomnia, uh, and also understanding the various effects that medications that older adults may tend to take, the, the effects of those medications on sleep. That sounds great. So I know you gave a lot of great information today in our audience, and I appreciate it. So that's all the time we have for today. And this wraps up the Science of Sleep Facebook Q&A. Thank you, everyone who joined us today. And thank you very, very much to Dr. Eldada for helping us all learn more about the science of sleep for older adults. You can also watch our previous live streams on the science of sleep for teens and middle-aged adults. And for more information and resources from the Science of Sleep series at www nia.gov slash science of sleep. You can also continue this conversation online using the hashtag science of sleep. Thank you all. And that concludes our series. Have a good day.